Hi, in this video, we are going to talk about corneal endothelial metabolic pump. As we know, the cornea is the main optical lens of the eye. It focuses transmitted light rays onto the retina. Thus, it is important for it to remain clear and transparent. Corneal transparency is maintained by a number of factors. And these factors can be divided into first, anatomical factors, and secondly, physiological factors. There are five anatomical factors. Number one is the presence of optically smooth tear film. Secondly, the composition of the corneal epithelium. Thirdly, specific arrangement of stromal fibers. Number four is corneal avascularity. And lastly, the absence of myelin sheath around corneal nerves. Physiological factors helps maintain cornea in a relative state of dehydration, which is at around 78-80% to 80 hydrated. These factors are imbibition pressure, barrier mechanism, endothelium metabolic pump, evaporation of water from corneal surface, and intraocular pressure. Our focus for today is the third physiological factor I mentioned before, the endothelium metabolic pump. Before we go on, some notes on endothelium. It is made of simple squamous epithelium which is arranged as a monolayer flattened hexagonal mitochondria, mitochondria rich cells that leave that line the posterior part of the cornea. The high concentration of mitochondria is second highest in the eye next to the photoreceptors. It is low in regenerative capacity. When there is loss of cells, the area is replaced by spreading or widening of adjacent cells. At birth, we are blessed with endothelial density of around 3,000 to 4,000 cells per millimeter square. Due to loss of proliferative capacity postnatally, we are left with endothelial density of 2,500 cells per millimeter square at middle age and around 2,000 cells per millimeter square at old age. In conclusion, there is 50% reduction in endothelial cell density compared to birth. In clinical practice, density of less than 1,500 cells per millimeter square is deemed unsuitable donor for corneal transplantation. There is presence of tight junction and gap junction in the endothelium. As you can see in this middle image, there are small gaps in between the green colored immunofluorescent labeled corneal endothelium macula occludens. This arrangement allows the endothelium to have a leaky barrier to fluid and solutes. This is essential since most nutrients for all layers of the cornea come from aqueous humor. So, an equilibrium is needed between a leaky barrier and metabolic pump that pumps up water from cornea to maintain a relative state of dehydration. This dual function is also described as pump leak hypothesis or pump leak mechanism. Back to the main purpose of this video, corneal endothelium pump. It is defined as a pump that sets up an osmotic gradient that causes fluid to move from stroma to the aqueous in order to maintain a relative state of corneal dehydration. Now, we are going to learn each structure that makes up this pump. First, we have a square that represents a single endothelial cell. Next, we have the neighboring cell. The apical part is the portion that faces the aqueous humor or the anterior chamber, while the basal part is the portion that faces the decimate membrane and corneal stroma. In between the cells, we have the apical tight junction. The first important structure is the potassium-sodium atipase that depletes and causes outflux of sodium. This in turn causes sodium to enter cells to maintain intracellular pH. A basal sodium hydrogen exchanger encourages flow of sodium into the cells and hydrogen from cell into the stroma. Sodium also enters cells via passive diffusion. The third transporter 
re responsible for water movement is the apical sodium bicarbonate co-transporter that encourages flow of bicarbonate from cell into the aqueous. As bicarbonate and hydrogen depletes, more and more bicarbonate and hydrogen is formed via carbonic anhydrase pathway. High concentration of hydrogen in the stroma causes stromal acidification and encourages carbon dioxide into the cell via passive diffusion. The net result of all this action is an osmotic gradient encouraging movement of water from stroma into the aqueous. In addition to the transport of water from stroma to aqueous humor, there is also a net flux of ions in between stroma and aqueous humor, namely the chloride and potassium. Their movement is made possible by namely the cystic fibrosis transmembrane conductance regulator and passive diffusion, diffusion channel located both basally and epically. With understanding of the corneal endothelial pump, pump, I hope it will make it easier for you to understand certain clinical or pathological situations such as how corneal edema happens in Fuchs endothelial dystrophy and what happened to the cornea after mechanical damage or trauma inflicted during intraocular surgery. With that, we have reached the end of this video. Thank you.